what they will get mean to you. Hopefully it will be a planned family member, but to some people it's just a necessity like a vehicle. Um, or even it might be more of an impulse by like my clients. But hopefully um, the support that goes into it. So with pet ownership, um, a pet should be for life in my opinion. And my ownership comes just from the world. So you actually covered by the Animal Welfare Act um, of 1999. So it sets out the obligations of owners and how they should take care of their pets towards animals. It's a clear statement that every animal has a right to proper and sufficient care. And it's actually the SPCA and also MPI that join that force this act. So MPI have actually made up these little folders. So MPI, which was our math, have actually made up these books on how to care for animals, we believe. Um, and they're quite big books, so they've even summarised it into a smaller book. So a summary of code of animal welfare for dogs, and it's a cat one too. And then you've even got um, ones for pigs, and rayahees, and goats, and uh, sheep and cattle. So it was someone's job to actually write up those, those books, um, and I don't think a lot of people know they even exist, but there we go. So for owner obligations, they have to meet an animal's physical, health, and behavioural needs. So that's proper food, and water, shelter, they should be able to display normal behaviour and they should have appropriate uh, animal handling. Also, they need to have protection from and rapid diagnosis of injury and disease, which this is where I sort of find things aren't so rapidly uh, mm -hmm. diagnosed. Um, and of course, they also have to um, alleviate pain and all distress as well. So ill treatment and then meat of animals is a crime. So the other law that covers animals and dogs is the Dog Control Act. And most of us will know with dogs that they have to be registered and that means they have to have a current tag on them, they should be microchipped now, and also um, they have to be under control. So you have to control your dogs at all times. If you're in a public place, you must have them on the lead. And there is actually a fine of $300 mm. if you don't, um, if you found uh, not having them under control. They should have proper care and attention, that's food, water and shelter, and adequate exercise. But also, they need to have no nuisance, harm um, or damage, which means they shouldn't cause uh, a nuisance to others by barking or howling or any means. They must not injure, endanger, intimidate or distress any person, stock, domestic or wildlife. And also not damage anybody's property. So basically dog attacks on cats, dogs, people and wildlife should be reported to dog control. I have people coming and telling me all these stories and I say, did you report it to dog control and they haven't, so really they should. Um, and I think we must respect other people, so that means neighbours, landlords, walkers on the footpath, work parks, and be open for discussion, especially with your neighbours, so we all get on and enjoy our pets. Remember also there's a few dog prohibited areas, um, some of the dog places need a permit um, to go, and also around playgrounds is sort of a no-go area for dogs. And I didn't realise that some of the sports grounds, museums, even cemeteries and war memorials, including their cow parks. So for dogs, you're covered by the Animal Welfare Act, which especially is, you know, this rapid diagnosis of injury and disease, but also the Dog Control Act, which is you must not damage or distress community. So they must be on a, under control at all times, unless they're in an off-leash area. But still in the northeast area, they should be under control. Um, and you can be fined. $300 is the magic number. For cats, they really only have one law, which is the Animal Welfare Act. And it's expected, though, that we get them all de sexed and ideally have a microchip or a form of identification. So with these, I find that cats know no boundaries, so they can uh, wander further afield. 
And so um, this is even more important that you discuss it with your neighbours if there's a problem in the open for discussion. So this was a case where um, this cat came in Maine, and of course I thought it was a bite access, but of course it was worse than a cat bite. We had a uh, really sore leg, and in fact it was broken. And do we have one idea of what the cause of the break is? There is actually, on the left hand picture, there is a little piece that is actually a lot more white than the bone, and that's actually metal. So this was actually a bullet. So this we guy, um, this is us doing surgery, or my nurse is prepping him up for surgery. So he's got his leg all bandaged and he's all clipped and prepped. So then we took his leg off, and this was the one on the left at the bottom is the next day. So that's only within 24 hours, I feel anything upside down as a happy cat. So, so it, oh, you took his leg off? Yep, so I took his leg off. Oh, right. On the left is 24 hours later, and yeah. on the right is another day after that. Oh, wow. So within two yeah. days, he was actually walking pretty yeah. well on that. And um, if he had had that surgically repaired, really the break was so bad yeah. you wouldn't be able to repair it. Yeah. But if it was a clean break and you repaired it, he would be in a cage for four to six, well, pretty much six weeks. Yeah, keeping a cat in the cage for six weeks. Is that no problem? So do you have to tell the police or the SPCA or something? Yeah, would you do that? he did go and the police couldn't prove it. And he knew it was his neighbour because there was bullet holes in his house as well. So, um, and what was said was that it happened again to someone else's cat. He ended up the same thing. Was the police not being able to prove it beyond reasonable doubt for the court? But wildlife is a little bit of a tricky subject. Um, if you take them on, then you become the person in charge, and you still have obligations under the Mental Health Welfare Act that must not suffer. Um, they can take a lot of work and require special diets and enclosures, um, and, they may, and you may be asked to pay for some of this treatment or even surrender it to us. If they're more suffering than euthanasia, you will get this um, Some animals are protected too, so you need a license to um, keep them. So we need to choose. And ultimately, the aim is to release them back so that they can have a normal life. We had a wood pigeon in the other day. <laughs> we get wood pigeons flying the windows all the time. Yeah, they want to fly in the car and see Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, they can get the giant on the berries. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. really, what the, with this course, I want you to become an animal advocate and spread the word. word. So learn to become more observant of your own and others' pets and their dangers, thus enhancing your duty of care and help provide all animals with the best quality of life. So share the knowledge. Just a brief mention about the exotic diseases. So there's a lot of things we don't have in this country, mm -hmm. like paralysis, take heart, my rabies, bird flu, and even from the mouth. So mm -hmm. it's really important. I have run the highway under number a few times, especially with the chickens and things. Um, just respect and water control, um, you know, say that if you've been on a farm or if you've got animal products, they're only doing their job and um, some things might need quarantine. So you notice you can the fancy words of things that we can get off animals and um, there are a few but not many, so worms um, we can get through poos of uh, cats and dogs, um, usually it's pretty near. Them. Mm -hmm. like this picture um, is actually a fungal infection uh, on farm habit uh, occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, Leptospirosis is usually from cattle. Mm -hmm. um, some of our local vector you can get just like your food poisoning to get it up from mm -hmm. um, Fleas and another bug called um, Chinatio, which is a parasite that can cause a bit of a rash. My deserts is pretty much being eradicated. Um, so we don't we don't do the hybrid thing anymore, do we? No. I think for a while there they were saying, right, it's your responsibility to keep them treated for um for identities, and we will randomly blood test your dog and if we find it we'll find you. 
And sometimes we will get people coming in that are going to visit the farm, and the farmer has requested them okay. to have a high death certificate, which means that they have been to the vet, the vet has given a high death treatment, which is a worm tablet that comes for high death, yeah. and we sign that on a stay we right. gave this animal this, and then they're quite happy oh, to have them. Right. So that's, um, yeah, occasionally we do get requests for that. And rabies, luckily enough, we don't have that in this country. Mm -hmm. So it's a privilege to own a pet, not a right. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for a pet? So maybe you could just foster an animal, or, mm -hmm. um, or maybe just get your pet fixed another way. Um, so you can be a volunteer at SPCA, you can ask vet clinics, they might need a hand, um, foster kittens, dogs, birds, uh, anything really. Um, you might just want a house mind for someone else, or you might want to um, you know, do dog walking. So there's other ways if you don't want the commitment to the firm long term. You want unconditional love. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I want your own pet. Don't get a dog if you don't like <laughs> <laughs>